Iconor. We're at T minus 25 seconds to lift off. Some excited folks back in, in Baikonur right now, waiting for the uh, liftoff of the rocket. We're at T minus 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And main engines firing, and we have liftoff of an ILS Proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan with the EchoStar 14 satellite on board. At about 10 seconds after liftoff, the rocket will do a roll maneuver and will soon experience maximum dynamic pressure, or Max-Q. Max-Q is the maximum aerodynamic load on the vehicle. It corresponds to about Mach 1.5 and occurs at one minute and two seconds after liftoff. As it lights up the night sky in Kazakhstan, T plus 45 seconds. We are at T plus one minute and two seconds, maximum dynamic pressure, max Q. Everything seems to be proceeding nominally as the vehicle heads in an easterly direction with a flight azimuth of about 61.25 degrees. T plus one minute, 30 seconds. Still a gorgeous picture. Clear skies certainly make it easy to watch some of the events. And we're coming up on the first stage separation from the second stage. Separation set to occur in five seconds. You should be able to watch it. And there was the separation. We will wait to hear from Baikonur on confirmation of this event. And I have confirmation of first and second stage separation. The second stage engines actually ignite while still attached to the first stage, and the exhaust from those engines escapes through the open grid work between the two stages. Small light in the sky right now at T plus two minutes and 40 seconds. And it looks like we have confirmation of a signal of ignition on all four second stage engines. The second stage engines will burn for over three minutes carrying the payload further into the mission. The next key mission milestone will be stage two and three separation, predicted for L plus five minutes and 27 seconds. And 20 seconds after that, the payload fairing will jettison. And at three minutes and 30 seconds, all systems are running nominally. Mission updates are always available on ILSlaunch.com, the website. You can find photos, descriptions of the mission traditions, the blog, the mission overview, and the latest news release about the mission. To see the updates, go to the ILS homepage, and under the current mission, click Read More. That will take you to the mission control page. And remember, to get a personal glimpse into life on Baikonur, check out the photos and blog entries that are posted on the website. An ILS team member writes each entry from the launch site. 
If you live in the United States or Canada, you can also get updates by calling the ILS Launch Hotline at 1-800-852-4980. Again, 1-800-852-4980. ILS and Echo Star have partnered on several missions. ILS produces artwork to commemorate the launch and each poster is custom designed to reflect each unique mission. Take a look at these past joint missions. Echo Star 4, launched on May 8, 1998, is a primary service satellite for DISH Network producing video, audio and data services throughout the continental United States and Hawaii and Alaska. Echo Star 8, launched on August 22, 2002, and DISH Network uses it as one of its primary satellites in offering core services and local programming. For another look at all of the launch posters, log on to ILSLaunch.com, click on Launch Services, and there you will find the launch archives with all of the past mission poster designs. Michael, tell us a little bit about what's happening now. We're at 5 minutes and 30 seconds. Well, at uh, plus 527, we were expecting uh, stage sec two and three separation. We're waiting for confirmation. And I have confirmation of second and third stage separation successful. And I also have confirmation of a successful payload fairing jettison. And our next milestone will be the shutdown of the Stage 3 engines, which is presently scheduled for T plus 9 minutes and 30 seconds. Well, as you can imagine, it takes a lot of coordination to launch a satellite with launch team, satellite manufacturer, and customer team all working together. We spoke with Russ Pritula, ILS Program Director, about today's launch. Hello, everyone. I'm Russ Pritula, the ILS Program Director for the Echo Star 14 mission. After a two-year absence from Baikonur, I'm happy to be back at the Cosmodrome reacquainting myself with the Proton launch experience. And after being in the studio for many of the launch broadcasts over the last two years, it's also very interesting for me to be on the other side of the camera for a change. There. We turn the air this has uh, been a great launch campaign despite, to despite today's blustery weather, and we are working with a set of top-notch professionals here in Baikonur. And so far, things have gone very smoothly as we prepare to launch the heaviest commercial satellite to date on Proton. For me, this will be the first of several launch campaigns this year, and it's good to be back. My sincere thanks to all the team members that made this launch campaign possible. And as we always like to say, go Proton, go Breeze M, go Echo Star 14. You may have heard from news reports following the recent catastrophic magnitude 7.0 earthquake in Haiti that members of the satellite industry made contributions to the relief and rescue of this earthquake-ravaged country in several different ways. Echo Star and SpaceNet of McLean, Virginia, worked together to donate satellite communications equipment and services to the American Red Cross in Haiti to help with relief efforts. SpaceNet gave the Red Cross portable ground stations that were set up in various areas around the country to help deliver Internet access to the Red Cross in areas where communication lines had been severed. EchoStar donated the satellite capacity from its EchoStar 9 satellite. I want to take you now to a blog. The blog is one of the most visited pages on the ILS website and is written by one of the ILS mission team members who is on site in Baikonur. The blog provides a personal glimpse into the life of the campaign and some of the mission integration activities that take place each week. Here's one of the blog entries. This one was written on March 12th. It was titled Payload Fairing Signing and Payload Fairing Encapsula Encapsulation, posted by the ILS launch team, 10 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time on March 12th, 2010. It says, quote, this has been a very busy week for all of us. One of the more technical operations that we perform during the campaign is the signing of the payload fairing uh, of the entire launch team. Each of the team members takes a turn climbing up the ladder, putting their personal touches on the fairing logos, and then climbing back down from the ladder to safety. The biggest decisions are what to write and whom to dedicate the launch to. Parents, children, and loved ones are named. It's a great photo opportunity for the team and the last thing we do prior to mating the ascent unit to the launch vehicle. It's now time for the Space Systems Laurel team to say goodbye to the satellite and hand it over to the capable hands of our partners 
from Khrushchev. And you know, you can uh, follow this mission by reading all the 